Thank you. Uh, Michael just reminded me that I need to start recording this session. So I give me one it. moment. I started it, Janet. You're all set. You start it. Thank you. All right. So this is our live portion. We're going to do some quick introductions. Please mute your phone. For feedback. Thank you. And um, we'll move into some highlights of the past year. Uh, award ceremony, since we did not have one with our awards banquet canceling, obviously. Uh, I will let you know where we're going into the next. I'm doing the NIMFON this week, and uh, I forgot and when to start. Please the, mute your phones. Yeah. We the, can hear uh, folks uh, talking. Session. Dan, there you go. So anyway. Um, Got him. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and before we get going, I would like to play a message from one of our platinum sponsors. So give me a sec here and let's hear from Tony. Greetings from Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm Tony Chapa, director of the Center for Environmental Management of Military Lands at Colorado State University, otherwise known as CEMIL. Each year, NIMFO gives us all a platform to discuss initiatives that support the military mission and safeguard the environment. During this year's technical sessions and working groups, Semmel hopes to describe how it's helping the military achieve these goals. To learn more, please stop by and visit us. We look forward to connecting with you and I hope you enjoy the conference. All righty, um, so thank you, Tony. Uh, from that, um, just a moment, we're gonna go to, see if I can get that. Oh, all right. Well, I also wanna thank the rest of our sponsors, our NIMPWA specific sponsors um, who have supported at different levels. You guys are all extremely important to us. And I would like to encourage every single one of you who are listening right now to go and get engaged, get involved and check out what they're doing. If you go to the top of the main page, you will see partner engagement. And that's where our, our exhibitors hall is. You can visit each of these uh, booths and talk to the folks and see what they're about. So with that, I'd like to get started with some introductions. And for that, I want to make sure it's a little more personable. Normally we're in front of each other and uh, we don't get that opportunity as much anymore these days. So um, instead of staring at a slide, you get to stare at my face a little bit. <laughs> So um, I will say that uh, thank you all for coming. I would also like to thank Matt Dumphy with uh, Wildlife Management Institute, WMI, as well as Cindy Delaney and her staff at Delaney Meeting and Event Management. Um, through them, we've been able to make this all happen. And this has been blood, sweat, and tears, moving our traditional uh, in-person meeting over to a virtual space. So thank you so much for everyone who's been working on that as well as our board members and all of you. So I have to look back exactly a year ago today, we were gathered in Omaha for what was going to be, what we didn't know at the time, but the last in-person workshop that, we, that I personally have been able to attend um, and participate since then. So it's kind of come around full circle. And the fact that I was with all of you folks um, it was a pleasure. That was, I, I couldn't be happier and more grateful that we got the opportunity uh, of seeing each other last year before this happened, networking over coffee in the hallways, having drinks and sharing stories afterwards. Um, it was very important and that time together meant a lot. I'm really happy to see you all here um, because each March, is that time when I get really excited and recharge my batteries with this meeting, um, gain energy from all of you, and we are emerging out of the winter and into the spring. And so the workshop really punctuates that for me. And I don't know, it might punctuate for some of you as well. But this year was a little different, <laughs> as we all know. The virtual world, people are, are a little exhausted by it. So my emotions were all over the board, as I'm sure some of yours. And there was, of course, excitement and stress. However, there was a new emotion and it was sadness. And it was really from missing seeing and interacting with all of you personally. It means so much. 
Um, so just the fact that you're here today, I really want to thank you. So as Monday came along and the plenary session, which was amazing, I hope you all caught it, began and the day progressed, I started to feel it again. I started to get that feeling of rejuvenation. I started to feel your energy as I saw faces up on the Zoom boards and I saw your chats and I could see that you were entering rooms. Um, and I hope that was the same for you as well. I also found that the more I interacted with the site and the platform, the better I started to feel and the more I was getting out of the session. So I hope that is the case. And I encourage you all to, to explore all the sessions um, throughout the week. So um, with that, I would like to get started with some of just the workshop announcements. And then I'm gonna go through some of our highlights very briefly. Um, so bear with me here while I switch and share screen. I am going to save questions. Go ahead and put your questions in the chat box. Um, our vice president and um, program coordinator, Michael Wright, is monitoring that chat box. Please remember to put your questions into the Pathables chat box as you are with other sessions instead of the Zoom chat box. Um, it helps us kind of keep all the questions in one place and makes it easier for everyone to see what's going on. So thanks. All right. So back to our presentations. Um, I would like to go over some announcements. All right, so we all wanna know what's going on with attendees. I have had gotten a lot of questions. Um, thank you all for being here. And that is a thank you to 629, that was yesterday. It's actually 631 this morning. Um, Thank you to the other 630 of you out there uh, that thought it was important enough to be here. That is a huge number. Um, we anticipated that with a virtual environment. Um, it is about a couple hundred over what we're used to, at least in the past. However, every year we've been growing, so it's not completely surprising. Um, this is a breakdown, as you can see, of the different um, registrants with the majority, of course, coming from the Department of Defense. This also includes the Army National Guard. Some people affiliate when they're with the Army National Guard as state on their uh, registration. And those we end up correcting those over to the Department of Defense, um, just so you know. So some of that is. Then you have your federal non-military. That includes BLM, US Fish and Wildlife Service, Army Corps of Engineers, URDIC folks. Um, those and APHIS, those are some other of the big ones that are out there that are federal non-military. Uh, private sector, great, great to have you. <laughs> great to have you here um, as well. That is 43 participants this year. All of these numbers, of course, are up from the past. Um, we have our university members, of course, uh, Semmel and Colorado State University, which is one of my alma maters, um, comes up with uh, most of that 38. Uh, we had some from other uh, universities, some state employees, and those are true state agencies like Game and Fish and Fish and, uh, and Wildlife in the states, and then a couple retirees. So I have to welcome Junior uh, Junior Kearns and Gene Stout, our two retirees and past presidents, to the meeting. So I know that a lot of you 455 folks with DOD are wondering how we break out, um, and so you can see. This is about typical and rel relatively speaking of what our breakout usually looks like, just larger in numbers. So you can see this year, a uh, big winner was Navy. I think Air Force, you won, you won the slot last year of most attendees. Navy's back up there challenging you to that one. Uh, Army, I think you've doubled plus your numbers this year as well, as has Marine Corps and National Guard. We tend to stay a little bit in the middle. Excuse me. All right. So looking at this 600 and well, 631 now, um, I just wanted to speak to this a little bit. This is a testament to the value of this workshop. Um, a lot of folks, you know, most of you have developed like me a knee jerk reaction to virtual meetings and presentations. Uh, it, it, it gets old and we're a little burnt out after an entire year of them. But um, I, so I feel it too. 
But this means 631 of you thought it was important enough to do it one more time. Um, and there's value in that. And that's really important. I want you guys to stop and think about that. It was hard to get here for everyone involved. Um, it, it was difficult bringing this to a virtual platform for everyone who's presenting. Um, so it was a lot of work. So I'm really excited to see you all here. Um, there's value in sharing this knowledge across services, organizations, universities, and private sector consultants. This is really unique. Um, and it's something that we hold really dear to us. So I, I, I'm, I can't be more excited to, to be here today. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, I'd like to thank everyone who made this possible from the presenters to those volunteering or helping out in any way to those who are paying for the attendees to come. I have to say for the services and the service leads, it's really important. Your support means so much to get people here. Um, even the accountants who are calling and asking about different forms and how, I, how do I pay for these things. Um, those are all really key cogs to get people and attendees to this workshop. So thank you. So now that we're here, um, I do want to challenge you all. This, this is key. I want to challenge you today to be present. I don't know about you, but when I get into these virtual <laughs> workspaces, it's very difficult. We're at home. We're in an office setting. We're not together in a room um, as a captive audience. Um, I challenge you to turn off your phone for just once for the day, if you can. Pick a session. Uh, maybe it's not this one. I, it doesn't matter. Pick one. Once a day, be present, be in the now. Minimize your emails, turn off your phones, and think about what it took to get here. And for me, I'm just grateful for people who wanted to make the effort. So that's my challenge for you today. And if you're paying attention now, great, you're done for the day. <laughs> um, and pick something tomorrow. So I do want to uh, remind folks though, of you 631, you will all be receiving a training workshop certificate, uh, continuing education hours, 34 hours um, for the week, if you're a full week participant. If you are a single day, you will also get a um, certificate for that day's participation. Additionally, if you were able to get into one of our training workshops on Monday and Friday, you will be getting an additional certificate of completion for that course. Unfortunately, in the virtual world, we were not able to present to you or give you the opportunity for the number of trainings and seats that we have in the in-person meetings. Um, so I'm sorry if you weren't able to get into one of those, but we will continue to be offering more trainings at the in-person next year. All right, so we are way past time. So I'm just gonna move on. Um, so highlights, I just wanna tell you this board has been amazing over the past year. Um, these are your board officers. You are most likely already familiar with them over the past year. Um, and, and several years. And I just want to give a huge shout out to all of them. They've been amazing to work with. These are your directors. Um, our regional directors come from across the board. So we do have great representation across the country um, from our directors at large, from east to west. I want to thank this board for all their hard work. This is the last, well, yesterday in our board meeting, technically, our last day of this board and I will be announcing the new 2021-2022 board at the end of this. Some of the things that the board did work on um, this past year uh, included the workshop, takes up most of our time, but we also uh, accept you have to um, check out Wednesday, eight to 10 central time is the WMI um, session. It's a special session that our own Dave McNaughton pulled together um, that is on COVID and wildlife health. So we're really excited about that session. Please check it out. We also officially established as association's tax status as a 501c3 nonprofit. We already had a not-for-profit status, but this makes it official and allows folks donating to our scholarship fund and others to have that tax write-off. So, and we continue to update our website. Um, so without further ado, I am late on this, but <laughs> Uh, I want to make sure that we have time to honor our 
um, award winners. This is an important part and we spend a whole night at the banquet doing so and, and giving them thanks and praise. And so I'm gonna turn this over to Zoe Duran, who is our, um, well, currently she'll be, she's our director at large um, and she's working the award ceremony. And with that, Zoe, are you there? I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you, Janet. And I'll try to <laughs> go real fast, but we definitely wanted to take this opportunity to uh, thank everyone for submitting your nominations. We had several very uh, uh, worthy nomination packages this year. Um, and uh, even though I'm gonna have to blast through this, uh, yeah, all of our yeah, award winners yeah, this year have done such incredible work and uh, I wish that we had hours and hours to praise you, but I'm sure we'll make up for it in our next meeting. So um, I know that we all been, we wish we were at the banquet enjoying food, probably one too many drinks. Um, Janet, next slide. And probably, uh, sorry, you can go back one slide. Uh, enjoying uh, Junior's sharp dressing, and then maybe having a couple pictures of us eating salad that we don't want. But mostly, I know that we just all miss being together, um, and I'm hopeful that we can be together this time next year. Um, before I jump into the awards for this year, there's a couple ways where you can make this uh, seem a little more interactive. While we need you to keep your mic on mute, if you wanted to turn your video on to give a little silent round of applause after each award, um, and you're also uh, uh, certainly welcome to add well wishes and congratulations in the chat box of Pathable so that our winners can read that. Um, so for um, the first award category, um, today is the Military Natural Resource Conservation Research Award. This recognizes significant research which goes above and beyond to improve our understanding and management of natural resources on DOD lands. And this year's award goes to, next slide, the Navy Pinniped Haul Out Count Project and their collaborative team of biologists and support personnel that spans across several Navy installations. This has been a really important ongoing project um, for the last several years, um, taking place at two geographically distinct Navy installations um, in Rhode Island and Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay region in Virginia. These biologists have been coordinating and collaboratively using cost-effective photo recognition software to record and supplement seal haul-out uh, counts um, at several important installations, testing and training areas, and vessel transit routes. Um, the data from these have been analyzed to influence the environmental variability on harm or seal behavior and the use of photo identification to quantify site fidelity and estimate population size. And of course, all of this helps to estimate potential impacts of the Navy might have on pinniped species. So um, next slide. There are several biologists and team members that have been identified as deserving recognition for this award. And those are all listed here on the slide. So please join us in congratulating them and their exceptional work with the virtual round of applause. Okay, so the second set of awards is in a different category. This category is the Natural Resources Conservation Management Model Programs and Projects Award, uh, which is intended to recognize individuals or groups of resource managers who have gone above and beyond to develop projects or programs that can serve as models for furthering natural resource management on military installations. And the first of these awards goes to a group and that's the Endangered Least Bells Vireo Monitoring and Recovery Team. It's a multi multidisciplinary team made of biologists and staff from MCAS Miramar, the San Diego Natural History Museum, and an environmental contractor who have all worked together to improve the knowledge of the Least Bells Vireo in Southern California, as well as planned and implemented vital post-fire habitat restoration and perform nest parasite control to significantly boost vireo nesting success over the last several years. And to give you an idea of how successful they've been, the subpopulation of vireos at MCAS Miramar has grown from zero birds in 1999 to 55 successful fledging, fledglings in 2020. And over the half of those successors, successes were attributed to individually being saved by the project team from nest parasites being the brown-headed cowbird. Uh, all three organizations involved in this effort have made above and beyond achievements in a short time frame with a small team and have produced huge award uh, rewards for the Lee Spells Vireo, including getting talks started on delisting under Section 7. 
There were several biologists and team members identified as deserving of recognition for this project. Next slide. Which are all listed here. So please join us in congratulating them and their exceptional work with a virtual round of applause. Yay. Okay. A couple more in the same category. So this is a, another group award to NAVFAC Marianas Environmental Team at Marine Corps, uh, Marine Corps Base in Camp Laws in Guam. This is a relatively new environmental team since this is a new base on Guam. Um, and they have gone above and beyond um, ability to adapt natural resource management while constructing a brand new base. They've done everything from threatened and endangered species surveys. Um, they have probably uh, built some of the uh, basic information about some of these uh, very rare species just in their efforts. They've promoted the collection of seeds and plant parts um, to salvage them from construction footprints so that they can actually have a native plant nursery and then restore those native plants on the landscape. They also do invasive plant and animal re removal, including fire ants and feral pigs. Uh, the team also takes pride in working with the local partners on the island to promote natural resource stewardships, sharing lessons learned and pushing the envelope on what can be done on such a small island. This effort also includes uh, a natural resources mitigation effort for high value trees in order to promote public access for traditional uses of those trees, medicinal plants and cultural sites. Uh, the natural resources management actions of this team uh, allowed the Marine Corps base to relocate to Guam and in the absence of their efforts, they do not believe that it could have happened. So next slide. Please join us in congratulating this team and their exceptional work with a virtual round of applause. Yay, go Guam. <laughs> All right, the last in the model programs, uh, or sorry, the second to last in the model programs. Uh, next slide goes to Mr. Martin Ruan, he's natural resource manager at Naval uh, Base Ventura County. Uh, Martin fully embodies this award category through his passion and innovation that have given rise to programs that not only effectively manage the endangered species on his base, of which there are five, but also ensures that over 80 tenant commands can operate efficiently and on schedule. He's been key in establishing cost-effective and non-invasive ways to monitor migratory wa waterfowl with UAS, which has resulted in less disturbance to the species as well as reduced bash risk for the base. This project is just one example of the innovative ideas Martin has and the fruitful multidisciplinary partners or partnerships that he has continued to cultivate and leverage for the betterment of the resources, the community, and the mission. And here's a small excerpt from his nomination package, which I thought summed it up well. Martin is always available to answer questions and help military personnel solve natural resource related problems, often coming in on weekends and off hours to investigate and solve problems. Martin is just about the nicest person you could know. He's extremely knowledgeable about the resources under his management and takes personal responsibility to ensure the installation maintains peak performance to carry out mission related operations. Please join us in congratulating Mr. Ruan with a virtual round of applause. Good job, Martin. All right, last for model programs is another individual, Ms. Uh, Melissa Booker. She is the wildlife biologist and natural resource management manager on San Clemente Island. Uh, Melissa is an exemplary installation biologist. And while being a biologist on an installation is tough, doing it for over 12 years on a remote island with heavy uh, last minute <laughs> uh, training can be even more difficult. She manages a nearly $4 million annual budget and her ability to manage a successful wildlife program with so many unique species while fully understanding current and proposed training is outstanding. Uh, she manages a huge and diverse program. Uh, she maintains strong working relationships with base staff and operators, state, local and federal agency partners. Mm. She always goes above and beyond the call of the job. Um, but in 2020, in 2020, uh, she uh, faced the challenges that the pandemic has thrown at us that maybe we've never experienced before. The entire island basically shut down, but she continued to continue to go to the island to perform necessary duties such as rodent removal and, and watering plants in the nursery. And while going above and beyond is expected each year of her, and she regularly does um, doing it during global pandemic, definitely, uh, and with a smile, further shows why Melissa is worthy of this recognition. So please join us in congratulating Melissa on a well-deserved.
Awesome. All right, um, a new award category. Um, this next award category is the Natural Resources Conservation Communication Partnerships Award. This category is intended to recognize groups or individuals that go above and beyond to promote and foster partnerships benefiting natural resource conservation on military installations. The first uh, recipient of this award is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Division of Refuge Law Enforcement and the Conservation Law Enforcement Program. Uh, vision, dedication, and diligence, this team of headquarters staff from the Fish and Wildlife Service Division of uh, Refuge Law Enforcement successfully implemented a national conservation law enforcement program partnered with the Air Force that meets the true spirit of interagency collaboration under the Sykes Act. The team provides an essential service to the DOD while simultaneously embracing the full meaning of the Fish and Wildlife Service mission. Even though the service is not obligated to provide conservation law enforcement support to military installations, this team of service professionals embrace their mission to preserve natural, America's natural resource heritage and execute the intent of Sykes Act. The team went above and beyond the normal duties in spearheading the new vision for Fish and Wildlife Service to prioritize and strategically place federal wildlife officers on the ground at military installations. And today there are currently nine federal wildlife officers providing full-time conservation law enforcement services to the Air Force. Uh, next slide. Specifically, we'd like to acknowledge the dedication and vision of three integral service staff, uh, Mr. Richard Johnson, Ms. Uh, Samantha Fleming, and Ms. Catherine Court from the Division of Refuge Law Enforcement. So please take a time. We'll take some time for a virtual round of applause. Okay. Next award category is Natural Resources Conservation Communication Promoting Public Awareness Award. Uh, this category is intended to recognize individuals and group who promote public awareness of the military's role in conserving this nation's natural resource legacy. Okay, the first recipient of this year's award is Fort Hood's Adaptive and Integrated Management Program and their outreach efforts. Since its inception in fiscal year 15, the AIM program has increased efficiency and relations, relations with the public partners and other DOD partners. The program has led the way in promoting public awareness of natural resource conservation at Fort Hood, which is one of uh, the largest and most capable armored military training installations in the US Army. Uh, each of the uh, uh, team members of the AIM program have stood out as champions for the program and engaged environmental stu stewardship amongst youth, civilians, soldiers, and their families. Just some of the programs that AIM has championed, they have a Fort Hood Pollinator Sanctuary, National Learn About Butterflies Day, an Environmental Youth Leadership Event, the Fort Hood Monarch Mission, and hosting the annual Christmas Bird Count at Fort Hood, among many other outreach efforts. The AIM's accomplishments is a testament to their outstanding commitment to promote environmental excellence, reduce its environmental impact, encourage stakeholder involvement, and maintain the balance between environmental and mission readiness, and is definitely deserving of this award. Next slide. Specifically, we want to acknowledge the AIM team members identified in the nomination packet, Charlie Plimpton, Chelsea Plimpton, and Brad Burden. So please join us in Congratulating the AIM program at Fort Hood. Okay. Okay, and then the next promoting public awareness is another individual award. And this awarded to Mr. Mike Medina, applied biologist and pest management consultant um, in California. Mr. Medina has over 30 years of federal service serving under three different NAVFAC compounds. And in 2020, he retired as captain in the US Navy, having also served in active duty as uh, a Navy entomologist and in the Navy reserves as a preventative medicine department head, medical planner, administrator, and staff officer. Mr. Medina supports Navy and Marine Corps installations throughout the Southwest and Northwest regions as a pest management consultant and pest management certifying official. These areas were previously supported by two NAVFAC entomologists entomologist, but for the last number of years, Mr. Medina has been doing it all. He also uh, provides his expertise as volunteering as the chair of the Armed Forces Pest Management Board Operations Committee. He provides critical training, expertise and advice for pest management programs, and overall is your pest guy on the West Coast. Um, 
Navy and Marine Corps natural resource managers and pest management um, operators in the Southwest and Northwest rely heavily on Mr. Medita, but he also provides training to allow them to be able to carry out those duties themselves. Please join us in congratulating Mr. Medina on his exceptional work with a virtual round of applause. Okay, our last and final award uh, for the 2021 uh, NIMFWA award season is the 2021 National Military Fish and Wildlife Association Lifetime Achievement Award. This is a, an award intended to recognize those have, who have contributed significantly over the course of their career, both to NIMFWA's progress as an, as an organization and to conservation on DOD lands in support of military, in, sort of, in support of the mission. This year's Lifetime Achievement Award winner is, next slide. Mr. Kyle Rambo. Now I'm gonna be honest, I have like, I don't know, five minutes of intro into <laughs> Mr. Kyle Rambo's uh, based on his uh, accolades and how why he deserves this award. Um, so I'll go through these quickly, but um, he's been uh, dedic dedicated his career to the Navy mission for nearly 40 years. He's a leader, educator, mentor and a genuinely good person who along the way has built a nationally recognized program. He, be he began his career at Paxitant River in the summer of 1981 with a series of se seasonal positions and then was selected to the natural resource manager position in 1986. Uh, he stood up one of the very first BASH programs in 1985. And in the early 1990s, he was also a strong proponent of the then newly uh, required integrated natural resource management plan. Anyone who knows Mr. Rambo knows his obsession with birds. So it's no surprise that he was instrumental in the establishment of DOD Partners in Flight program nearly 30 years ago. His passion for birds is only seconded by his passion for herps. And he's been a DOD Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Network member for the last 10 years. He also has a passion for public involvement and has been a huge part of instilling trust in, in the Navy and natural resource conservation. Uh, he's been a true champion for NIMFA over the years and encourages all of his incoming Navy uh, resource uh, folks to join. He was also a member of the member, or he was the membership coordinator for uh, NIMFA and played an important role in writing the Sykes Act Improvement Act. So, Mr. Rambo is on the line today, and I'd love to hand it over to him to say a couple words about this award. Kyle, are you on? I am. Thanks, Zoe. And uh, Zoom is not recognizing my camera, so you're all lucked out today. You don't have to look at this mug, but can, can you hear me? Yes. All right, very good. So I'll try to keep this brief. First, I'd like to say that I am honored and humbled to receive such an award from this organization. This is an organization that means an awful lot to me. While I'm not an official plank owner, since I joined uh, NIMFA by attending its second annual meeting, I was busy at home working to support that first meeting while working for my boss uh, at the time, future NIMFA president, Larry Adams. I was the gopher doing a lot of logistics and, and while he was out there playing at the Southeastern with Gene and, and uh, Tom and others. So I attended my first meeting in 1984 with the Southeastern Association in New Orleans. I felt a bit like a kid in a candy store surrounded by professionals all working for the military, people who actually understood the unique challenges and opportunities that I faced. I ate it up, listening to every word, gleaning every morsel of info that I could use, that I would use throughout a 40 year career. I remember looking up to guys like Gene Stout and Tom Warren, NIMF was first two presidents, <clears throat> excuse me. I clearly remember one, Gene pay attention to this. <laughs> you may remember this. I clearly remember one of the many in a list of tips and recommendations that Gene shared with the group in a presentation he made. It was such a pragmatic and old fashioned gesture that he recommended and an acknowledgement that none of us can accomplish anything alone and without the full support of the organization that employs us. He said, at least once a year, deliver a box of donuts to your financial officer with your <laughs> sincere thanks for their support. Hope you remember that, Gene. <laughs> well, I did exactly that shortly after my return home from that meeting, and the dividends began to pay out, pardon the pun, almost immediately. I've learned more from this membership and received more than I can ever give back. I'm grateful for all the individuals who have stepped up and contributed their time and their talents to lead this organization. Thanks to the old timers like Gene and Tom and uh, Junior, I think you're on here too, 
and many others who sh shaped this organization and our profession, and to a posse of former presidents from the state of Maryland, where I live, who I got to commiserate with on a regular basis, guys like Larry Adams, Rick Griffiths, Rich LeClaire, Thomas Ray, and Doc Bailey. It's the Maryland Hall of Fame. Um, thank you to Jim and Jackie for their thoughtfulness in nominating for me for this award. Um, thank you to those who contributed information and supported the award, to NIMFO members Rich Fisher, Tammy Conkle, Tim Burr, Greg Fleming, and the non-members Glenn Theris with Maryland DNR and Andy Burr of Calvert County. Um, and my apologies to anybody I overlooked. Here comes the fun part. As an old official old fart now, I guess I'm supposed to pass on some pearls of wisdom gained through almost 40 years in the business. I'll give it a shot and try to be brief. Number one, as much as you can, surround yourself with good people and trust their counsel. I've made a career of it. Number two, respect your elders in this business and learn from them all. But also look behind you now and then to the younger professionals and learn from them too. We've come a long way from the old hook and bullet club, thanks to an infusion of new ideas and new blood. Three, be passionate about what you do. Passion is not a bad word. It is vital to a successful program, but must be tempered because it frightens some people. You won't make it by being either a zombie or a zealot. Number four, invest in the tangible and intangible values of community outreach, both the communities inside and outside your fence lines. Community trust is essential to accomplishing your goals and the extra allies will help you get through difficult times. And you may not know that the president of the local garden club or the local bird club for whom you just gave a lecture or led a field trip is the spouse of your next commanding officer. True, it's happened. Five, know the mission of your service and particularly of your installation intimately. If you've served yourself or even grown up in a military family, that'll be much easier. If you haven't, do the work to learn how they speak, what they do, why they do it, what they need from you, and then bust your tail to get it for them. They are why you even have a job. Six, think out of the box. I've been constantly amazed by the brilliant thoughts and creative solutions that come from members of this organization, especially in dealing with thorny and challenging issues like executing an often destructive military mission while successfully managing endangered species like red cockaded woodpeckers or desert tortoises. Seven, teamwork and partnerships aren't just buzzwords. They're the new reality for getting anything done especially in these austere fiscal times. Number eight, lastly, take full advantage of the opportunities afforded by gatherings like this one. Better in person, sure, but even if only virtual, um, get involved. Steal all the good ideas you can from others, but share as many as you can too. Your success is our success. We sink or swim together. So thanks to all of you for your friendship, your support, your camaraderie, and thank you all for this great honor. Thank you so much, Kyle, and I, I can't wait to uh, grab you a beer next year. Um, with that, Janet, I'm just going to hand it back to you since I know we're, we're pressed for time. Yep, that sounds good. Thank you so much, and we I can't wait. I hope I run into many of you uh, next year and, yes, can grab a drink. Um, so we so are running short on time. Short on time. Feedback. Apologies. Okay, um, still getting feedback. Hopefully you're not hearing that. Alrighty, so please go to the awards page. The NIMFO Awards um, is at the top. You can see it on the screen there. You can read all up about um, all of our winners. So that led us perfectly into where we're headed because those were great words of wisdom. Um, thank you, Kyle, and um, where we're going. And this is the board that's gonna bring you there. We did have our vote and we have uh, a few newly elected board officers and a little bit of um, change up. So I just wanna quickly introduce your 2021, 2022 NIMFA board officers. Uh, the primary officers have stayed the same except for the secretary's position. That position is up, was up for election this year. And so our own uh, Zoe Duran moved from the director at large into the secretary position. So congratulations, Zoe. Looking forward to that. Our other newly elected positions um, is Rich Riddle. Welcome to the family, Rich. You director at large, newly elected. Um, we're really excited to have you on. 
Um, we were sad to say goodbye to our uh, to Zoe as that director at large, but we're happy to have a new member of the family. Um, we had re-elections for our Eastern and Central Regional Directions or Directors, Michelle Richards and Alan Schultz. And we had a little uh, rearrangement. Bill Berry uh, took the place of Roland Sosa as your new Western Regional Director. So uh, I'm sad to see Bill leave uh, our officers as secretary, but I'm happy to retain him as the Western Regional Director. So um, about that, if you are interested in joining us, um, can I please ask to have folks go ahead and mute your phones? I'm hearing some background, there we go. Um, so with that, you know, the board of directors and every everyone who's involved, it's, it's a great group of people. If you have an inkling or interest at all in this, please keep this in mind and contact Nicole, our immediate past president. She is the nominations chair, uh, committee chair. Next year, we have a really big election, and I know this was a rough year with COVID, and I'm hoping we can get more interest, but we are, we'll be electing a new president next year, vice president, and treasurer, so three of our, our five board officers positions um, we'll have, and then, of course, our one director at large, and then we, were, we have elections for the other regional, central, um, east, and west directors. So, um, you know, if you're interested in getting involved, I, I'm a Brene, I don't know about Brene Brown fan. I'm sure a lot of you are out there. My husband is as well. So you'll understand the message. Act with it, you know, as you go out and you look at these involvement opportunities, be courageous, put yourself out there, make yourself vulnerable because it's what matters. It's the stuff that's valuable. Um, it's the hard work that means something. And I think all of you who have been working with DOD understand that in any capacity, support capacity, is that it's all about the passion to get the work done. Um, we're here to, for, to conserve, to work to conserve all natural resources while we support our soldiers. It's such a unique and extremely valuable thing that, we're, that you are all doing, that we are all doing. So put that your foot out there just a little further, get involved, become part of the family. Um, we're really looking for folks to join a committee contact us. We are not going to bite your head off. We are definitely a big, fat, happy family. Um, sometimes dysfunctional, but you know what? We pick each other up when we're at hard times. And I have been very thankful for that, for this family over the past year through COVID. Um, I want to make sure though, with our last bit of time, because we were out, we are out of time and I have to apologize to the GIS technical session. Um, I am going to skip my vision for the future because I can send that to you electronically. And I wanna open the floor to any questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing here so uh, that you all can, I can see some faces. And I wanna hear from any of you. We do have the extra 10 minutes. If you need to leave, please do for the technical session. Um, we didn't have much time to go over things today, but I know you're all tired of staring at your computer screens. Um, I do want to encourage you to come to the trivia tonight and we can continue conversations in private meetings, schedule a meeting with anyone here, um, come talk to us in our chat boards, in our discussion boards, um, so many ways. It's a very robust platform, so please explore it and take advantage. Um, I think Michael had to leave and help uh, Tim Buchanan, our other board member, moderate the GIS technical session. Um, so just go ahead if you have uh, a question, either raise your hand or um, unmute yourself and I'll do my best. I cannot, I lost my Zoom buddy, so I can't see the path of bulls. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and see the first person I see up there, which is Bill. Bill, can you look at the chat box and tell me what's in there if there is a question that needs to be read and answered? Since I lost my, my wingman. I see one on the pathable chat. Do you want me to just go ahead and- Oh yeah, Zoe, go for it. Sure. Um, Colin Lee um, said it would be nice to see a list of prior year award winners and their bios on the NIMQA website. That's a great suggestion. It's something we've thought about um, and you know we can definitely get that going on our, on our website. Thank you, it's a good suggestion. Anybody else? Hey Janet, it's Alan. Hi, Alan. Janet Allen, can you hear me? 
Yep, go ahead, Alan. Hey, uh, not a question, but a comment. I always knew it took a lot to put on a live conference. I had no idea it would take so much to put on a virtual one. So, and Mike's not on anymore, but you and her and the rest of the board too need to get some good recognition here for putting this together. It's, it's quite an accomplishment. It's so, taken a village. I'm Thank glad you, to hear Alan. That everyone's looking at it. Getting... <laughs> I am looking forward to getting back together though, because I really believe that in-person is, is super valuable too. And I was glad to hear Ryan uh, say that himself because he's critical to helping us get that happening in the future. Uh, but great work so far to to you and Mike and everybody else. This is going very smoothly. So well, thank good. You. So far, so good, right? Uh, it wasn't so in rehearsal. So they always uh, what does Mike Mike told me? You know, when your kid's performance rehearsal goes horrible, it usually means the performance will go well. <laughs> Janet. Um, <laughs> Uh, Laura reminds everybody to check out the font edition that comes out right after the conference. Um, there will be a write-up for each winner of the awards there as well. Yes, we will have this year's winners de definitely on the website. I love the idea of adding past award winners, and I I'd like to see that as well. Um, and then that's great, Laura, because I also wanted to tell people that we will have the full statistics of our attendees in that first font session as well, kind of a recap of our workshop. And um, Liz kept me honest there. I think I'm sleep deprived last night when I was putting those stats together. When I pulled the statistics down from our registrants of 631, um, whoever registered the Army Corps of Engineer Erdic folks, they are, uh, registered them as non-military federal. That was a mistake, of course. Uh, our Army Corps Erdic folks are military and support the military. Uh, apologize to you all, you know who you are. Uh, I think there's about eight of you out there, maybe maybe five, but uh, that was a mistake on the checkbox for registration. So apologies, we'll get that fixed. Any other questions? Uh, Jean also pointed out that the uh, history booklet that's available on the website has some of the uh, previous award winners as well from uh, going back quite a ways. It does, Jean, thank you. Um, and that's something uh, Jean Stout and um, and Tom Warren, who unfortunately uh, is not with us any longer. One, I feel thankful that we all got to see Tom last year in Omaha. They put together a, a very, um, actually I have it on my desk. I keep it handy. This fabulous uh, bound history book that we have digitized on our website. It has the history of NIMFWA and we need to continue to add to that. One of the visions I had, Jean, um, to that is I really wanna build on what you all created. Um, there's an amazing foundation of this association and I wanna take that foundation and improve on it and continue and make it better as we move forward um, and really start to bring in um, some of these new, new aspects. I think this year really showed us ways we can do that. So thanks. Janet, Dave McNaughton says that he spoke with uh, Matt Dunphy this morning about a few things, but specifically our upcoming meetings next year, 2022 is at Spokane, 2023 St. Louis, and 2024 we'll get another shot at Grand Rapids. Oh, that's so, good. That's a new one. Excellent. Yeah. Michelle will be very happy to hear that, Michelle Richards, um, and so am I. I'm sorry we couldn't get to Grand Rapids. Uh, I also wanted to tell you that out of the whole workshop, he Matt did tell me that we currently have 1,772 attendees to the full week of the North American workshop with both the AFWA side of the house as well as the NIMFWA side of the house. Um, please go check out the plenaries, the special sessions. Uh, there was amazing plenaries. Please listen to them. They, are be, they were recorded. Go back if you missed them. Um, like I said, Dave has one on uh, wildlife health and diseases that is going on Wednesday. There is an amazing cultural resource integration uh, session going on Thursday, and there was a good tribal land and water talk this morning. Does anybody else have some questions? I see 92 people are still out there. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to, glad to see all your faces and smiling faces. Please come to trivia tonight. That will be much more fun. I, uh, I went out to the, you know, go check out the WMI and the AFWA uh, events too. I checked out trivia last night. 
I saw Neil Bass and Michael Wright joined that. I don't know if anyone else did. Um, it was very fun. We had a great time. So that was put on by backcountry hunters and uh, anglers, I believe. I just wanted to echo a little bit about one of the, some of the things that folks said about the award winners and, and, you know, reflect a little bit on what Kyle said, but, you know, when I think about it, um, at least three of the, of the award winners I work with have worked with personally, professionally over the, you know, my career. So, you know, again, I want to recognize uh, Melissa Booker at SCI. I've gotten to go over there and help them out a little bit, which has been a lot of fun. And, uh, Dave Boyer at Miramar, which is one of uh, my subordinate installation. Uh, Dave was actually my boss when I first arrived at Camp Pendleton uh, 25, 26 years ago. Um, and also Mike Medina um, from NAFAC San Diego uh, Southwest. I worked a lot with him. He's, he's actually, with, I think was at NAFAC when I arrived again, 25, 26 years ago. So that's kind of neat to see uh, these people that I work with um, for a long time uh, getting the, this kind of recognition. I think it's really neat. Thanks for sharing that bill. Plus our game warden program won last year. <laughs> hey, it's not too early to start thinking about next year's nomination packets, everyone. Um, please do so. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not hard, it's a, it's a good cause. People out there deserve that recognition, as you all know. Um, as I'm watching the award ceremony, I hope that sparked something in to, to look at your colleagues and think about who you're gonna nominate next year. So um, we are gonna get kicked off here any second. Join us at Trivia, hop over to the technical session. Stay healthy, everybody. I can't wait to see you in Spokane. I mean, literally, I think I'm going to be on, in the airport, just like a little kid waiting for Christmas presents to arrive. Um, pretty excited. And uh, don't forget your challenge. Be present. You worked hard to get here and the people worked hard to present to you. Um, take a minute, be grateful and uh, get out there. I'll see you all week. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Janet. All right. Great job, John. Thank you. I'll hang on until they totally kick me off. <laughs> till the very end. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Thanks. Go down with the ship. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My father and uncle, I'm in the guard, but you are, I work for the guard, but my uh, father and uncle were Navy. Down with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up their ability to swear like a sailor too. Might not have been so good. <laughs> hey, you got time to chat right after Janet? Um, I do. Ship sinks. All right, just give me a call. Okay. Nineteen. Who do I got? I still got fifty-seven people sitting around. That's awesome. Yeah, the meeting's ended, but couldn't kick I us off the bathroom. We're all yeah, in the they bathroom. were. They just left it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should just start serenading them. <laughs> Tell them to hang up. They'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> they, I could start showing. Uh, oh, look! It's three eleven, and we're not kicked off yet. Amazing, Dave. I can start playing the uh, recordings of, of your karaoke night. Oh no, maybe. <laughs> Maybe it'd be best to shut down the meeting. All right, bye all. I'm gonna stop the recording at that. <laughs>